On today's show, the 19-year-old trapped in her own home. My worst fear would be that I'd end up indoors forever. The crippling fear that's causing the family so much pain. I'm scared for her because I don't know what she would do if she never leaves the house again. And stopping her living her life. She's never worked. She's never been a, a pub, a club, anything like that. Can the Speakmans help to set her free? What's going on, Georgia? Just thinking about it. <laughs> My name's Georgia. I'm 19 and I suffer from agoraphobia. Georgia hasn't left her home for nearly four years after a series of panic attacks made her too scared to go outside. When it started, I was 16. Um, I was at college at the time and I was studying and everything was fine. And then one day I just decided that that was it. The panic attacks had got too much, the anxiety, and I stopped going out. Being stuck inside all day, it just makes us feel, I suppose, depressed in a way. I just, I feel upset a lot. I get upset easily, I cry a lot, and I talk about going out with my mum and stuff, and that just upsets us even more. It's so, so hard on the family, really, really hard. Um, you can't include Georgia in anything where you would want to go for a family meal or anything like that. It just doesn't happen. We just, it gets to the point where we just don't do it anymore. My mum and dad's tried everything. They've tried to bribe her to get her out of the house and none of it works. And I know it puts pressure on them. I would love to go outside and I'd love to be with my friends and stuff. And it's just too hard. I do look out the window sometimes and it's, it's just difficult knowing that I'm scared of being out in the world. I don't have that normal sisterly relationship. It's so hard. Cause then when you do see her and you see her so down, it's, it's heartbreaking and you try to avoid it, but there's no getting around it. Her family struggled to understand her condition. I would really like you to try it on and maybe try and go outside today. It's just, I would love to, but it's too difficult. I mean, I don't feel comfortable. But why? Just too scared. Scared of what though? Being outside, being too far away from home. But when I have the panic attacks, um, I get, I, I, I really do feel awful. I mean, sometimes I've even thought myself that I was gonna die or have a heart attack. Dad bought us a dog, um, a little 12 week old puppy at the time, and it was to try and get us out the house. But I've never done it, my dad's always done it. I think dad gets frustrated and mum, she does get upset. I mean, I've seen her cry before. So it is, it is difficult knowing that. I've made them feel that way. I feel really guilty, I do, I do, I feel guilty that I'm stopping them from being a family. I mean, I can't go out with them, so they won't go out. It's difficult, it really is. And she hasn't moved on with her life at all, and she needs to do that. She needs to go out, and she needs to experience things. Otherwise, I, I can see her sitting in the house till she's, well, at my age and that's no life for anybody. She doesn't have a quality of life. It, it's not there. She, she, she dreams of going outside and it's, it's a dream at the minute. I've got nothing to do when I get up. So I just, I'll sit downstairs and I'll watch TV. I mean, I'll have a shower, I paint my nails. I do get ready sometimes, but it's pointless. I don't go anywhere. So I just spend a lot of time inside or I've got Facebook and things like that and I'll go on that and that's how I keep in contact with people but even then I don't, I don't really speak to anybody, so. Georgia has come to rely on her younger brother, Robbie, for company. Me and Georgia were dead close and we always like talk to each other about everything. I would love Georgia to get better so we could um, go to football so you can watch me play so we can go for meals, go to my grandma's on Christmas Day, it would just be a huge difference. My little brother's become my best friend. Like, he's the person that I talk to about everything. Stuff that usually you wouldn't even tell your little brother, I just tell him. George's phobia means she cannot step beyond the garden gate. I feel fine when I'm 
I'm standing in the garden. I mean, it's when I start to get a bit closer to the gate that I start to feel worse. So. And what sort of feelings do you do you get like physically feelings? I feel lightheaded, and my eye, my, my vision's blurry, my eyes. Um, I suppose. I just, I, I get sweaty palms and stuff as well. And Are you all right to hear you? Yeah, I start to feel it a bit more now, though. Do you? Yeah. Do you think you could even just try, just just to go across, across there? No. Why? I just don't want to. It is a lot harder now to, to get her outside. You come out the door and everything, and you can see that she's breathing and just trying to breathe and just trying to, and I can see her, and then you can just see the fear on her face. And it is really, really hard to see your child like that. It's, it's literally two, three steps at the most. That's all you've got to do. It's just the thought of being out the gate. But there's nothing here. I'm here. I'm here are. to protect you if you need anything. It's you not that. It's how I feel. Physically, how I feel. But I know, but you can't feel like that forever. It's a little so. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. George's phobia means she cannot go to visit her sister and her nephews, who live just 15 minutes away. Auntie Georgia, what do you know about what's the matter with her? She has agoraphobia. What does that mean? She can't, she's allergic to Congo out. How do you feel about that? Sad. My sister has two little boys. I mean, they're my world, literally. Archie is so funny and we're really close. I've, he's always... We've always been close. Like, we've always got along and... I think... He understands a lot. He, he knows that Auntie Georgia doesn't leave her house. Auntie Georgia doesn't go anywhere. So, that's really hard. It puts a lot of pressure on all of us. It means that the boys miss out on a life with an auntie that absolutely adores them. I don't want to have to lie and see it's because I'm poorly. It's not because I'm poorly, it's because I've got this fear that I can't control, that takes over me. We always wanted Georgia to be a godparent because she's so close to Archie and she has never been able to leave the house for most of Archie's life. My sister's had to put the christening on hold because of me, basically, because of my condition. My fear, my phobia, it's, it's ruined the chances of her getting the boys christened. She needs a life, a, a life outside at four walls. She's in the best prison ever. Really, that, that's what it is. It, it, it's a prison for her. And she's got all the home comforts and everything. It, but she needs to go out, she needs to experience life. She's never worked, she's never been to a, a pub, a club, anything like that. My worst fear would be that I'd end up in, indoors forever. Like, I'd never ever go out. I'm scared for her because I don't know what she would do if she never leaves the house again or what would happen if anything happened to our parents. She's never going to marry, she's never going to have kids. She's a vibrant young woman and she's stuck in our bedroom or she's in the, just in the sitting room and it's just not fair. And it really, really breaks me heart to see her like that. Deep down, I'm, I'm really, really petrified. I am. I'm so scared. I don't want to be at home forever. I want to have a life. It's most definitely the last resort. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. Coming up, can the Speakmans heal the family's pain? It's making us feel really anxious thinking about it. And give Georgia back her life. And that totally turn your life upside down. 19-year-old Georgia has spent the last four years living as a prisoner in her own home. I've got this fear that I can't control, that takes over me. Unable to leave the house, Nick and Eva are coming to her. Hello. Hello. 
Hello, nice hello. to meet you. Yeah, I'm nice Eva. to meet you as well. Yeah. Hello, Georgia. Hello, Georgia. Hello, hello, Alison. Uh, hello, you must be Georgia. Hi, Hi I'm Alison. Georgia. Georgia. Nice oh, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You too. This is like the most important thing ever. It's been nearly four years since I've not left the house. So right now, this is like the biggest opportunity I've ever had to get better. Well, thank you for inviting us today. Welcome. Very welcome. And why have you invited us? What's the problem? Um, the fact that I can't leave the house. I'm just really scared, too scared. And when did that start? Um, it would be nearly four years ago now. OK. And was there anything specific that made that happen? I was sitting with GCSEs at the time mm -hmm. when I started getting anxiety and panic attacks, but I continued through everything for mm -hmm. about two years. And then I went on to college. Yeah. I did fine in college. And then one day I just decided that I wasn't going to go out again. Okay. And I just stopped. You see, we know that a panic attack is actually a symptom. So you have a panic attack because of. So what do you believe is the reason that you've started to have panic attacks? Um, I, it's hard to put your finger on it when you come to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a moment that I was walking home from school with two of my friends and a man exposed himself to me and my friends and were reported at the police and we had to go through a whole video interview and stuff about that. And then the following year, that same man did it again. Could I just ask your mum, how would you describe Georgia as a child before being exposed to? Very happy, happy go lucky, wasn't bothered about anything and she just used to get, get on with things really, really good. So when did you see a change? When Georgia's dad, um, when he was younger, he was assaulted. Can you just tell me about that? He'd gone out with friends and he was out, I think it was after, it was after midnight. Anyway, when he come home, he's, he had his shirt off and he was holding it to his neck and he come in and I mean, I could see the blood and everything it was, and it was, it was awful. Right? Okay, what's going on, Georgia? <laughs> Did you witness this, Georgia? I was upstairs when it happened and he he came home and I knew there was something wrong. And I knew that it was bad. But that's we all had to stay upstairs out the way and that's all that and I really I knew of it until the next day. It's making us feel really anxious thinking about it. Could I ask, where is your dad now? He's not here, is he? No. And why is that? I don't think he can... Really... He's, not, he's not comfortable enough to be around cameras and stuff. He won't even have his picture taken or anything. Since when? S since the attack. And that was how many years ago? It was in two, yeah, 2000, wasn't it? Would it be 2000? Yeah, because I was six. OK. What did you think had happened to your dad when you were sat upstairs? You thought he was going to die, that's what I thought. And you had no idea what had happened, but you thought your dad was going to die? No, I could hear... I, could, I knew there was talk of blood and stuff like that, and I just thought the worst of things. I just thought that he was going to die. OK. So what you're telling me is that you've had one event in your life and that totally turned your life upside down. It did, it did, mm -hmm. definitely. So the fact that Dad isn't there now to discuss this tells me that he's in a lot of pain. And I don't mean physical pain. Doesn't talk about it, won't talk about it, so it's not something he's comfortable with. He prefers to keep his cards close to his chest. So for 14 years, your husband and your dad will not talk about this issue. Oh. It's glaringly obvious to me, and not certainly to Eva, that George has got a problem because a dad got attacked 14 years ago yeah. and a dad has gone into his shell 
And George was seeing that and thought, oh, that's all right then, I'll do the same. I've never really thought about it like that, have you? No, no. And can I ask you, in this, this prison that you've created, is there any particular room that you feel more safe? Bedroom. I just... I can shut everything off then, and I can sit on my own and do whatever I want then, and I'm by myself, and... And if ever me, mum and dad try to talk to us about the situation and I'm not in the living room, then they can't talk about me when I'm in my bedroom, so I'll spend all my time on my own. So you've gone from being... be able to go anywhere, like a normal teenager, to being confined to the house, to actually really being confined to your bedroom. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel when listening to that? It's awful. It really is awful. I mean, we encourage her to come and sit with us and everything, and she, she might last five, ten minutes, and I know she wants to go back upstairs, and she'd rather be up there. And it's that that, that is like a little, it's like a safety blanket, isn't it? It's, mm. it's your comfort. Her. So she's really confined to her room. The, she spends more time in her room than anywhere else in the house. Definitely more time in there, and that's that's a place where you're more comfortable, aren't you? Yeah. It's where I prefer to be in my bedroom. When your dad got attacked and you were told to stay in your room, how did that feel? As much as I wanted to go down and make sure that he was OK, I knew that staying in my bedroom with my sister would be the best place to be. Because? I didn't want to see my dad hurt. OK. Thank you both, cos you've answered Thank so you. many questions for us both that we needed to know and a lot of things that we already suspected and you've confirmed for us. And um, obviously we've said, you know, there's, you're, you're a family of six um, and I know that you've mentioned about your sister. Um, we'd like to invite your sister to come and join us if that's OK. Yeah. Alex, thanks for joining us. Hi, yeah. So we heard before that you're, you've got a son at age six mm -hmm. who's not been christened yet. No. And because why? Because Georgia cannot attend, um, she's really close to Archie, and that would she would be the person if anything happened to me that I would trust in with Archie, and she can't attend, so she, we can't have a christening. Can you tell Georgia how frustrating that is for you? It's really frustrating. It it hurts me. When you can't come out, it hurts me having to explain to Archie. Because Archie, although he can say the word agoraphobia, he doesn't understand it. And he'll come back to me and talk to me and ask me, well, I'm six, I can leave the house. Why can't Auntie Georgia? How does that make you feel, Georgia? Knowing that a six-year-old child can put it into perspective. Devastators. To know that a six year old child can do something that you can. It's heartbreaking. It's awful. The Speakmans have asked the family to write letters to each other saying how they feel. To Georgia, I love you so much. You are my sister and my best friend. All I want in life is for you to get better. And I know that's what you want too. I want us to be able to go out together and do all the sisterly things that we miss out on. I want you to get better so you can join us when the boys go out. You mean everything to me. I just want you to be happy and enjoy your life to the full. We've got a lot we've got to catch up on. Love you forever and always. Your big sister, Alex. <sighs> Alison. Would you mind reading your letter, please? <sighs> Georgia, it really hurts and upsets me to know how you feel on a daily basis. I can't start to imagine what it must be like for you going through this every day. It must be like a prison for you, not being able to do the things other girls your age take for granted. You've never disappointed us and you never will. I love you so much and I hope 
you read this or hear this, you'll feel better about yourself and the things you can do rather than the things you can't. George, have you written a letter? Yeah, I have, yeah. Could you read that now, please? Yeah. I am desperate to be cured and do everything in life that I've missed out on instead of sitting around the same four walls, which really upsets me. I've lost all my friends and now I feel so alone in the world. This is my last resort of getting help. So let me ask you a question, if I may. If we could give you a gift today, as a family, what would that be? I think everyone's thinking the same, aren't you? Yeah. Just for George, it'd be well. What would that mean to you, Alex? It would mean I'd have a sister. I would get a sister back. The sister that I can only ever come and see when I'm here. It would be amazing. It would be... You would have a life. And life's precious. And the one that you're living in now isn't nice. What did it mean to Archer? Oh, everything. It was absolutely everything. It would... I think if she left the house, he would never be able to come into the house. <laughs> he would never be in, cos he would have her everywhere. He would. He absolutely adores you, Georgia. I know he does. I know myself he does. Thank you so much for being so open. We really appreciate it. What we'd like to now do is for you to leave us and we'll get started on therapy with Georgia. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Thank you very, very much. Thank being you. So Thank you for being so honest. We've got our work cut out for us today. You know, the fact is, is that our therapy is based on evidence and proving to Georgia that she's got it wrong. You know, this condition is crippling this entire home. Coming up, Georgia's treatment begins. How does that make you feel? It's sad. But can she let go and move on? An overwhelming fear has kept 19-year-old Georgia trapped in her own home for four years. I really do feel awful. I mean, sometimes I've even thought to myself that I was going to die or have a heart attack. Can the Speakmans help her change her whole life in just one day? OK, Georgia, so when was the last time you actually left the house? Four years ago. Four years ago? Yeah. OK. So four years ago you left the house, and obviously since then you've been stuck in here, yeah. in these four walls. Can I ask you, have you taken any medication? Yeah, I have, yeah. You? I've been on four different medications. And are you on medication right I now? Am, what yeah. is it like an antidepressant? It's an antidepressant, yeah. So you're on antidepressants right now? Yeah. And can I ask, has that made any difference to you? No. OK. And what have you done, Georgia, in relation to, other than medication, what else have you done to help you get out of the house? I've had counselling. Um, I've tried relaxation CDs. Um, I've had CBT as well as part of counselling, so... Yeah. OK. But there are, there are some things that we've obviously got to discuss with you and just bring to your attention, and one of those is that it's almost as if watching you and your mum together earlier today, and, you know, your mum is very overprotective, and I totally understand why. However, there is um, a very apparent element of you being very dependent on your yeah. mum. Um, and with that in mind, can I ask you, how do you feel if your parents or if your mum leaves the house? Just recently, I've started panicking more when so, I'm in the house on my own. So now you feel even worse if your mum's away? Yeah. OK. But one of the things that you've got to realise is, is that it's almost as if when all this started, when you were like 15 or 16 years of age, it's almost like time stood still and you kind of reverted into... You've reverted into being a little girl, really. You've been yeah. very dependent on your parents. You, your whole life revolves around your parents. Anything that you need because you've lost your independence to this 
is orientated around your parents and therefore you've also got to understand that there will be a transition and that transition being is that you're going to have to go from child to being a 19 year old woman yeah. in a short space of time yeah how does that feel it's exciting but at the same time i feel a bit, a bit scared a bit confused maybe okay maybe a bit of both okay i mean i do understand that i understand that and what's <clears throat> Whilst you're in that confusion, I'd like you also to consider that you said earlier that this is your safe place, and not particularly this room, but your bedroom is your, and that's where you spent. That's where you've spent the bulk of the last four years. Yeah. And yet, even though that's your safe place, it's also your prison. Yeah, it is. Which is a bit of a paradox, really, isn't it? Yeah. So that doesn't really make sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is because ultimately you're trapped here because of a series of events that started when you were six years of age. Yeah. When your father got attacked. And essentially, when you think of going outside, your mind basically says, what does this mean to me? oh, I could get attacked if I go outside, which is why he's scared of going out. So essentially, and I want you to consider this, the, before you consider going outside, you're asking the six-year-old you what's going to happen. Yeah. Because you're stuck in time. We talked about Archie earlier, and I'd wonder, how often do you ask Archie for advice on how to run your life? Never. Why would you not do that? He's sick, so he, he doesn't <laughs> understand. So. Exactly. Exactly. But that's what you're doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. It does, yeah. And it puts it more into perspective, it doesn't does, it? It does, definitely. And that, does that make you feel a bit foolish? Yeah. <laughs> okay. In a lot of ways, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, the great thing is, when, once you start feeling foolish, and once you start being able to laugh at yourself, that's when you start to change. Yeah. But the moment you laugh tells us that actually you're seeing it as a grown-up yeah which is fabulous um, the other thing that when we spoke earlier that you said is that you have panic attacks all the time yeah and we wanted to ask how many panic attacks would you say that you've actually had outside I couldn't count I, I, um, Lord and how many panic attacks have you had inside just as many what does that tell you? I've never thought about that before. Now that I think about it, I'm like, this is supposed to be my safe zone, but I'm still panicking in my safe zone. I'm panicking under sedative medication, I might add. Yeah. And what that So creates? what's the difference? There is, like, no difference, really. There isn't. Can I ask, is anybody else in your family I know your dad obviously got attacked and I know about the fact that you were exposed to when you were 15 or 16 years of age. Has anybody else in your family been attacked? Yeah, my sister. Okay. So, and was that, where did that fall in between, like, so your dad got attacked, then what happened next? Was it your sister or yourself? Sister. Okay. So your dad got attacked, your sister got attacked and then you were exposed to? Yeah. So, your dad got attacked, but he still goes out, even though he got attacked. Yeah. Okay. Your sister got attacked, but she still goes out. She knows where this is going. Does she? She does. You got exposed to, nothing happened, mm. but you stay in. Yeah. Isn't that the wrong way around? It is, yeah. Were you one step ahead of me then, by the way? Yeah, oh. I was already thinking <laughs> hey. I was already thinking I said you were clever. I know, you did, you did. So basically, Georgia... You're staying in this house, and you've stayed in this house for four years... <clears throat> you've stayed in this house for four years based on something that never happened. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I feel stupid. <laughs> I do. But I've never thought about things like this. 
So now it feels like I'm finally getting somewhere. That's right. And the thing is, because your dad got attacked, because your sister got attacked, and then because you got exposed to, you incorrectly told yourself that the outside was to blame. Yeah. And so what you then did was you said, outside is to blame, it's dangerous out there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop myself from going out. And what you call a panic attack, we call it a protection attack. Because you're just protecting yourself from going outside. But you blame the outside. Yeah. And what did the outside ever do to you? Nothing. <laughs> OK. I get the odd person might, have, might not be perfect. Yeah. But the outside never did anything wrong. Yeah. Never done anything to me. Anything to you? Never done anything to me. No. I actually quite like the outside, do you? I like the outside. Yeah, I do, yeah. I used to like the outside. <laughs> OK. Well, what's your thoughts on it right now? Um, I still love to be outside. I mean, love being in the garden and stuff like that. It's just getting out there. Well, do you know what? We've got something to show you that actually is just outside, just outside in your garden. Shall we go and look at it? So, Georgia, you made some choices because of this issue that you had. And they weren't great ones, to be honest with you. In fact, remember your friends? Yeah. Yep. Threw them away. Didn't you? Yeah. You also threw away. Remember that? Yeah. You missed that? More than anything, yeah. But you threw that away. And you also threw away days out. Yeah. How does that make you feel? It's sad. And all that's left... Me. A lonely little girl. See, but you're not a little girl, are you? No. 19. I'm just looking here. Let's take a look. You threw it all away, but you can take it all back. If and you want. Today. I do. Today. There's something else that we'd like to show you. Someone else that... could have possibly thrown away. So, George, we've got two balloons there. What's written on the balloon? Archie. See, we know that that little boy absolutely adores you because of what we've been told earlier today. And we also know that he means the world to you. And the thing is, he's six at the moment, so he's got to do what his mum says, but... There comes a point that if you don't change and you don't join him in his world, then potentially... This is what would happen. And you'd lose him too. It's too big a risk, isn't it? I don't like that to happen, would you? No. But the great thing is, it's the second chances in life. And you've got that second chance today. So you can... ..take Archie and hold him tight. and take him with you and join him in his world. Are you ready to do that? Definitely. Should we, have a, should we take Archie with us and go and have a little walk to the green? Yeah. Come on, then. For the first time in four years, Georgia has been able to step beyond the garden gate. You free? 
We don't know where we're going. You're going to have to take us, because I know there's a green somewhere that you know we need to go to. I think I am. Which way is it? Straight up. Up there? Yep. Have you got any negative feelings? None. Nothing. And usually I would have by now. Where would your comfort zone be? Or was your comfort zone the gate? Comfort zone was the gate, yeah. And you feel absolutely fine? Yeah, can't feel it. You just, do you feel a bit odd? Like, or do you feel just... It, it doesn't feel bad to be here, but it feels strange that I'm not panicking. Yeah, I understand. Okay. It's gone. Yeah, I can't <laughs> feel it. I can't at all. As much as I'm trying, I just can't feel it. I can't. Just try a bit harder, just to be sure. I can't, I can't, I can't. Do you know what that face is telling me? Her yeah. face is telling me, <clears throat> Nick, shut up. I'm sorted. Leave me alone. <laughs> the reason I want you to be 100% certain, and the reason being is that you've decided that you've changed your future. You don't want to let Archie go. But the thing is, Archie doesn't know that yet. He doesn't know that yet. And neither does the rest of your family. Mm. And we've got a surprise for you. Yeah. And a surprise for them too. And a surprise for them too. Because what we've got is your family gathered together somewhere. And they're waiting and they're hoping that you will turn up. But they don't know. Because they didn't know if this was going to work or not. Yeah. And if you're happy, we can drive along there, turn up and surprise them. I'd love it. <laughs> Just a few miles away, the family are waiting to have Archie christened, the event they never thought they'd be able to have. Honestly, you're amazing. You really, really are. Coming up after the break, Georgia's first outing brings on a panic attack. No, I want to go back home now. Seriously, I don't want to. And as her family waits, will she be able to join them for Archie's special day? Georgia has been suffering from a phobia which has kept her confined to her house for four years. It's restricted the family so much that her sister would not have her children christened without her. She's really close to Archie and she can't attend, so we can't have her christening. Until today. The family have finally gathered together for Archie's christening, but they have no idea if Georgia will be joining them. They can only hope. I feel excited, I feel nervous, I'm worried. I'm just a mix of emotions at the moment. The family have waited for this moment for the past four years. I'm feeling very apprehensive, nervous, but very, very excited, knowing that she's gonna come here. But unbeknown to them, there's a problem. I wanna go back home. Well, tell you what. No, I want to go back home. I want to. Can okay. you tell him, please? Okay, let's just hang on. Do you want to? Are you having a panic? <laughs> I just want to go back home. Okay, just calm down. Just calm down a minute. There's a little part of us inside that's worried, but I'm just praying and hoping that she finds it in herself to be able to leave the house today. Don't forget that Archie's waiting for you. No, I want to go back home okay. now. Seriously, I don't want to. Okay, can can we you tell just, him? Can we just pull up somewhere for a sec, Dave? If Georgia was able to get here today, it would be the best feeling ever. It, it would be like all my Christmases at once. You went for a walk and you were absolutely fine. Yeah. So right. what's the difference now? So what's the difference now? I don't now? know. What I just feel like I need to get home. That I just and need what, to be home. And what's it? And you've been home for four hours without your parents and mm -hmm. you were fine. So what's different now? You I need don't to quickly know. tell I'm just, us. I'm just. It's because I'm out and I'm. And what? And what's going to happen? Just, just tell me what's going on. I don't happen, know what's going to happen. I'm just I'm scared in case I'm going to panic and that. I would be absolutely devastated if therapy hasn't worked for Georgia and she can't make that first step to leave the house. What I want you to think about right this second is that your mum and dad are looking to you. Really, you are like a, a key. Everything. You're the to key fix the to family. fix the whole yeah. thing. And they're sat there waiting for you. And the joy, really there now, the you? joy that they're going to feel when they see you. Do you know what just, what's just happened? It's like we've just been going up a hill, but you didn't know what was over the over the top of the brown. And we've just hit the top of the brown. And you're feeling better now, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's just the fear of the unknown. It's you, you don't know what to expect. You're just in a state of confusion.
As the family wait for the ceremony to start, they still don't know whether Georgia will make it. But with the help of the Speakmans, she has finally conquered her phobia. Washington Old Hall by Alexandra Williamson for a ceremony to welcome her son Archie into our community and to celebrate his being among us. My name is Colin Laidler and I'm an independent civil celebrant. Archie, you have been named by your family and friends and your supporting adults have been appointed. We welcome you to this community. Georgia would now like to say a few words to you all here today. God. To Archie and my family. I never thought I'd be standing here today. In front of my, in front of my family in public, something that I was once so scared to do. This means the world to me being here and becoming Archie's godparent. I can't wait for my new chapter in life to begin. A fresh start with you all. You all mean so much to me individually. Each one of you support me in different ways. I will never be able to thank you all enough, Archie. Me and you have so much to do. We have a lot to do and I'm so excited and I hope that you are too. And I love you with every beat of my heart. And now let's all start afresh. I'll be out there every day now and I hope the house doesn't become too quiet whilst I'm out. <laughs> Catching up on the things that I've missed out on in the past four years. Love you all so much and thank you all. This is one of the biggest days of my life, having my sister back. I feel just totally over the moon. I can't put into words how I actually feel. I am just so happy. I'm so excited. I'm so When she walked in, she sat down at her and she just looked at me. And that was it, the tears started, and then she's looking at me saying, don't cry, and I'm trying not to cry, and she's crying. And it was just, it was so emotional. Oh, no. See you next time, you're going to be my best friend. Hello? 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 I, I can never thank you enough. Uh -huh. Just honestly, the only thanks we want is for you just to enjoy your whole family and just just live. Got a gorgeous family. Yeah. Just enjoy them. Honestly. He's not winning. I don't know. He's not winning. The future's bright now, it really is. Like, I've got so much to do, there's so much that I want to do, and I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to achieve so much. Oh, I'm looking so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't know. I love you. Thank you, George.